Ian Rappaport for the NFL Media Group joining me here now on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Ian? Rich, you have, your story, which is interesting, kind of brought up my story that I was thinking about. So a couple years back, remember when I used to travel from Dallas to L.A. Yep. every week for, uh, for game day morning? So one of my trips back, uh, I get on my plane, I look to the guy next to me, and it's Romo. And we kind of knew each other a little bit. I was living in Dallas. I reintroduced myself. He said, yeah. And we chatted a little bit. And we ended up talking for more than an hour just about football, about so many different things, including – and at this point we were talking about Peyton Manning because I believe the Sunday night game was going on at the time. And he was explaining how a quarterback knows that he's done. And it involved the timing, release, how when you get to be in your upper 30s, you release the ball a little quicker because you don't want to get hit. And that hurts your completion percentage, and that translates to this. And it was like an hour and a half of an in-depth, unbelievable, analytical football discussion – and I remember thinking two things. One, this is not at all like the guy who is interviewed on a regular basis by the Dallas media. Two, this guy's going to be unbelievable yeah. whenever he hangs it up and joins the TV booth. And I, I'm sure he's going to be great. Well, obviously, he's also going to have bring to the table, too, the experience of being um, in the spotlight, uh, pressure on you, uh, yeah. as well as uh, learning with the spotlight on you. Because a, a lot of folks just think of Romo. Oh, well, Romo's a guy who went to Cabo as a kid, Right as a as a, <laughs> a, and and got roasted for it. They remember the the dropped football um, on the on the hold um, and some other moments from the Dallas Cowboys when they had a shot to 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 win it all. But Romo made a mistake, uh, and interestingly enough, in the year where they came the closest, the latest, um, it, it it wasn't his fault that Des Bryant. Uh, was ruled not a catch. He yeah. was terrific that season. And the reason why they got that far. So he's got so many experiences uh, to bring to the table. I think he's going to be terrific. My question for you is, Ian, is is how did this happen? Why, why today? Why now? As opposed to a guy who we saw on the day of the first uh, le- day of the league year sent out a, an Instagram video saying farewell to Dallas Cowboy fans <laughs> that made you think he still wanted to play. So two answers to that question. The first one about why now. So I'm just looking at the calendar, what I know about the TV and PR world. So you had March Madness, the Final Four, the championship game, and then you have the Masters, the, the Par 3 tournament on Wednesday. The Masters starts on Thursday. This was the only day, today was the only day where there was nothing scheduled for CBS. So all of a sudden, I think Tony Romo just filled their news hole. And as a PR decision, which this clearly was, this deal is, from what I understand, has been done for some time, that he's been leading in this direction for some time. Uh, this is basically a a pretty savvy PR move from, from CBS to do it all today. And I don't know for a fact that he's going to be at the Masters, but it would surprise me if he is not. So, um, yeah, because obviously these things can't be like, you know, Romo last night decides, you know what, I'm just don't want to play football anymore and, <laughs> right. you know, calls his agents. Just get Les Moonves on the phone. And, no, these things take a while to hammer out. So right. why then why, if, if this has been a done deal for a while or leaning that direction, wh- where did the news of Jerry Jones saying to other general managers, you can – you can go uh, check him out if you want. Was that maybe a PR move on his part? So Cowboys fans don't point a finger in his direction saying that Romo did this because he had no other option because Jerry was doing the wrong thing with him? I mean, what, what about that? Well, uh, that, that was real. Um, you know, the, he did send out a notice. I've seen it to, to general managers around the league, seeing if they wanted to talk to Romo. It really sounded like that was the last-ditch effort. And, and really an, an, uh, an effort for, for Romo – to see who is interested or more importantly, who is not interested. Uh, the Texans and Broncos were very quick to privately say, we're not trading for him. I got to think Tony Romo got that message loud and clear to say, you know what teams? Yeah. I mean, the Texans would have signed him as a free agent for not a lot of money with not a lot of risk. But very clear. The teams were not clamoring for him. Now, as far as his deci- the Cowboys decision not to release him. And again, I, from what I'm told, I'm not sure they end up releasing him today either. They might just keep him on the retired list, but it, spread his cap head out over two seasons and, and keep him their property. But they actually were protecting him. You know, when everyone thought that he was going to be released, if Romo had gone on a free agent visit with the team and was set to sign with the team, he needed to be sure that he wanted to play. So by the Cowboys keeping his rights, basically they protected him. Uh, basically they protected him from going to a team and being unsure about whether he wants to continue and destroying his own value. 
the Cowboys actually did do right by him by just keeping him as their property. Huh, interesting. You know, and, and to be honest with you, that makes sense to me because it just made very little sense. I know Jerry Jones is a businessman, et cetera, et cetera. But just knowing how he, he, he talks to his former players and, and the way former players talk about him, uh, for the most part, that it just made very little sense that he and Romo at the very end would have some sort of acrimony happening. Right. But but they just, I'm just went on vac- the families just went on vacation together, believe but, it or not. And 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 you know, but but I'm just trying to put all the pieces together. The Instagram video that comes out with him in his house and his his lovely wife having a cameo at the end that he put out on the day <laughs> of the first day of the the new league year sure sounded like a guy that wanted to play. So maybe he's he's doing all of his options, thinking that maybe he doesn't want to get hit anymore. Um, has a plum job. I mean, these again. Oh yeah. These jobs do not come up all the time. They don't even come up half the time. These are rare jobs. So he decides just this didn't, ha- even, this didn't even come up. They actually opened it for him. That's how rare it is. Right. So that's why I'm just I'm kind of like like a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire talking out my answer with you here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's basically what, what, what may have happened. And then just to give him one last moment of, of, I guess, uh, one last moment of, of assurance to yeah. see if he did want to play that he had an opportunity this weekend to find out who did. Cause if the Texans, if he was released on, on the day, first day of the new league year, isn't he a Texan right now, Ian, wouldn't you say that? If he w- if he wanted to play, yes, I think he would be a Texan. But that's really the problem. So, you know, yes, I mean, I think he would have signed. Now, the other problem is, you know, he's used to making 15, 16, 18, 20 million dollars a year. That's not the contract it would have been. And Romo has put his ego aside this year in a way that I know is very, very difficult for him and very uncomfortable for him to watch a younger quarterback take his job. That was difficult ego wise. I know that. This would have been as well to sign a one-year, you know, seven million dollar base salary contract with the ability to make fifteen total if you're healthy. You know, ego-wise, that's tough as well. Uh, and I'm not sure he would have loved to be in that situation of taking a bargain basement salary when you're used to making so much. It's not about money. He's got a lot of money, but it's just value, if if that makes any sense. And that's. You know, it's the same thing as finding out that nobody really wants to trade for you. Nah, n- not At some to... point, people, you know, people can only say loudly enough, like, it's time, man. It's time. Well, not to sound too flippant about it, even though that's a caveat for about to sound flippant. Uh, right. if, if Phil Simms uh, has a problem being the face of something for so many years and a younger quarterback takes his job, all he got to do is ask Romo how to handle it. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> – it, not to say he's a Dak Prescott of this, but I guess he kind of is. He, that's exactly I mean, what he is. I, it really is. Yeah. Honestly, he this did is the same thing to Bledsoe, so he knows. For the for the television business and the football business, this is unique, uh, to say the least. Ask the poll question of Ian Rappaport before we send him along his way in the rest of the NFL media group world. Yeah, Ian, where will Tony Romo spend more time this season, on the field or in the broadcast booth? Yeah, because you're 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 reporting that. That if the Cowboys need him, if Dak goes down, he might you know take off the microphone and the cape and 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 play again. Yeah, I, I think I, – I would say this. It's definitely a possibility. I know he's thinking about it in his mind. Uh, it will be in the broadcast booth. Uh, I think he's going to find, like most guys do, that it is pretty cool to watch football and make a bunch of money and be the star again and not have someone try to slam your face in the turf. Yeah, you win every week. You don't get hurt. He's going to take his kids yep. to school. You know, uh, I, I mean – you can't put a price Stay tag right. on that stuff. You cannot put a price tag on that stuff. And CBS is probably going to put a pretty nice price tag on it, too. Uh, thank you, Ian. Yeah, sounds like it. Take care of yourself. We'll chat, we'll chat soon. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.